Yeah, number three, so the first thing is a G. And then I'm going to play the D on the D string. So that's my G, that's my D. But again, I'm crossing, I'm going from the E string to the D string, which is already kind of tough. And then I have to go back to the E. It's kind of fun to do, but that low D is really hard to hit. Not impossible, but... I think adjacent strings should be easy, right? But jumping strings will be tough. Yeah, but I mean, I also don't want to say don't ever ride it because it is cool, you know, when you get to go... It's not impossible. It's just... Um, let me give it to you this way. When violinists are trying to come up with fingerings, we come up with fingerings that avoid string crossing. Because the more string crossing that we do, the, it changes color too, right? So if I can play like, for example, what's a good example? Here's a good example. If I'm gonna go from this high D to this low F, this F on the G string sounds different than the F on the D string in first position. So if you really want this color, which is richer, rather than... If you're doing it for color, a violinist will respect you, you know? It's like, oh, they really want that rich um, F on the G string. Um, so part of it is color, but if I could choose a fingering then, I would, I would choose one that maybe is easier for my left hand and my right hand. So it's like we're always looking for the compromise. How do I make it easier for this? And how do I also make it easier for this? Um, I remember a, a conductor told me one time that if you had to sacrifice uh, one, make it easier for your bow and harder for your left hand. That was his philosophy. And I've, I kind of agree with that. Because if your bow is traveling less, like the bow is more important to a violinist than the left hand because it creates the articulation, the color, the... Um, the, the duration, the rhythm, this does so much more. So we try to be kinder or nicer or more playable for the right hand. And then whatever we can do with our left hand, we try to compromise. So for number three, I would say that if you really wanted the left one, I would say that that's okay. That a violinist would work hard to get to be able to play that part. Um, having said that, what you wrote on the right hand side, is so much easier because I don't have to skip a string. Right? And it just sounds so much better too. Because also, maybe it's true in flute too, to hear that D because it's in the same like octave rather than that's really hard to hear. But not impossible. I always have trouble writing whether I should write. That, that 16 notes in uh, two bow strokes or one bow stroke or I know that the violinists will just figure they, will, they, will, they don't follow the composer's bow strokes and they, they will just write their own bow strokes Right I mean part of bowing is um, it's not just logistics, right? It's also musical too Right? And then if I did that separate even if it's legato it just sounds different and we can do both of them, and there was even a shift in there too, but violins are good at masking that shift. So even if you have a shift in there, it's okay to have a slur. Uh, we practice for that. Um, so yeah, I would say go for it. You, you can do either one. And then the right hand side of number six, I would just go... So it's just a different sound. I could slur all of that too. Um, Playability, both I can do it. So it just depends on what sound you want. Like stronger accents, like the violinist can do up and down stroke equally powerful. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's how the modern bow is designed, right? I think back in the Baroque era, you can only do accents on a down bow. And there's still a little bit of um, um, a norm for us to try to accent on a down bow or start the downbeat on a down bow. That's how we, that's what we default to. 
But if a composer has a good reason for accenting on an up bow, um, I think it'd be fine. For example, number six, the right hand side, if it was slurred, and then you wanted me to accent that, that C, and that's kind of cool. So sometimes that feels okay too. And then I can also accent on down bow. So maybe what it really depends on is what you're doing before and then what you're doing after, and then also make it consistent. So if you always want that phrase to end on an up bow, make all of them kind of have that little flick. When you, if you are skipping strings, uh, adjacent strings and skipping strings, are they, can they be done in one bow? Or you have to change, do you have to change bow direction? That's a great question. So if I'm slurring, like let's say I have a low E on a D string, and I'm gonna to go to the E string, I can try to mask the slur, right? But it's hard because I have to cross over the A. So what I'm doing is I'm ghosting the note, which means I'm just, I'm taking the weight off the bow, but I'm still moving it. I'll do it really slow. And then when I get to the E, I'll lean in. So then I get, it sounds like a slur to you, right? But I'm kind of faking it. But what would be cooler is if I went from uh, the D string to the A string and I play that A on the A string, adjacent string. I think that might sound more like a slur, but then you'll get that slide if you want it. So we have ways of not faking it, but ghosting things too. Last question that you asked about advice for bow strokes. You know how like pianists have that long phrase marking? I personally don't like that because it's, I don't know, I don't find it very helpful for a string player. But my best advice that I can give composers is just sing the melody. And where, you're, where you naturally run out of breath and need to breathe again, that's the bowing. So I'm just gonna make up a melody. If it's like da da di da da dum ba dum, I took a breath right before the last two notes, right? So then, then that's the bowing. So it's all down bow, and then the last two notes would be slurred too. But it's because of the way that I sang it that I knew how to do it. So I would just recommend composers to just keep singing their melody and paying attention to when they need to breathe. That's when we will have to take another rebo. Nice. Thanks, thanks so much. I'm so enlightened right now. All right, everybody, you got something out of it.